So Moto Man says you guys like geeking out over this uh, engineering stuff. Um, so I figured I'd, I'd give you a walk front to back on the, the ND uh, Miata roller skate. We put this thing uh, on display uh, at the New York Auto Show, I think, and we put it up with no explanation whatsoever and everybody had to kind of figure out what they're looking at. So I'm gonna go through and sort of show you what you're looking at and what, what this means in terms of uh, making the Miata such a fun car to drive. No particular order, just working front to back. Um, you notice the new car has electric power steering. Obviously, every modern car has that now. Um, but we put the, the assist motor right on the front of the rack. But the reason the assist motor is directly on the rack is to get a more direct steering response. Um, typically, we'll put the assist motor um, on the steering column. And when you do that, you have a lot more torque going down the, t the steering column. And the steering column being made of a material is, is not infinitely rigid. So it deflects a little bit and you lose a little bit of steering rigidity by putting all that torque in the column. Um, putting it directly on the rack means that you only are putting as much torque through the steering column as what you can feel with your hands. It's much less load on that part, much less deflection, and a much more rigid steering response. Um, we have uh, forged aluminum double wishbones on the front, just like we did on the NC Miata. Um, this is what you, when you're building a sports car from scratch, uh, just to make the pure best sports car you can get, this is what you do for a suspension. We're not sharing parts with, uh, with any other car. We have to make what's proper for a sports car. And the reason a double wishbone is, so, is right for a sports car uh, is because we're able to, to control the, the camber curve. The upper wishbone is always shorter than the lower wishbone, and you can see it's angled up a little bit higher. So as the suspension compresses, that upper wishbone pulls in a little bit and pulls the top of the tire in. So as the body rolls, the suspension compensates and keeps the tire upright. So we're able to tune the suspension to it. Actually, it's fairly soft and has a quite a bit of body roll, but it doesn't lose any grip because the tire uh, is still, still upright and still in the right, right position relative to the road. Um, compared to the uh, NC, we used to have a, a, a cast iron uh, upright here. Um, that's uh, this piece. I got it right side up here. Um, this was 7.9 pounds. I remembered that. Um, we've switched that out to a forged aluminum upright now, which if you could feel my muscle tension is only 4.1 pounds. Uh, this is much lighter. Obviously, an unsprung weight is absolutely essential to keeping the tires in good contact with the ground so the car really works on a bumpy road. Also, if you look out at the, uh, at the hubs, we've switched from five lug hubs to four lug hubs, which in itself isn't really a, a big weight savings. What that is is an indication of how much lighter the car is, that we don't need that fifth lug now. Um, but if you compare the, the hubs, this is the five lug hub from uh, NC, and this is a four lug from an ND. Um, it's a little bit lighter. It's about uh, 1.1 pounds lighter. But if you look at the, from a side view here, the bearing in the new, smaller, lighter hub is a lot bigger. Uh, we have a much uh, more robust uh, and more rigid bearing. Um, so it's going to last longer on a racetrack. It's going to, uh, it's going to give you a more uh, rigid uh, control of the wheel, so there's a more precise steering feel there. Um, so we're not, uh, not compromising strength in our, in our quest for lightweight. Uh, what else can we look at here? Uh, the engine, obviously, is a Skyactiv-G 2-liter, uh, basically the same engine that's in a Mazda 3. Uh, but tuned to feel very different. Um, to package it in the car, of course, we've changed the intake manifold and exhaust manifold uh, and the oil pan. Um, we changed the valve cover because uh, a valve cover on a sports car should be aluminum, so when you open the hood, you're not looking at a piece of Tupperware. Uh, but internally, um, we've lightened up the flywheel about 20%, uh, and we've tuned it uh, to run on premium gas, um, which allows us to tune it with much sharper throttle response, which makes it much, feel a lot, uh, a, lot, a lot stronger than it feels uh, in a Mazda 3, frankly. Um, if we move back to the transmission, this is something that I think really shows you how committed we were on the ND to making this absolutely the best car uh, it could be. We had a perfectly good transmission and diff uh, in the NC that we could have used. It would have fit in this car perfectly fine. Nobody was complaining about the shift feel on, uh, on that gearbox. Um, but instead, we started over from scratch, designed a completely new gearbox and diff. Um, this box, you'll notice this is a sort of a prettied up display model. It's all bondoed and painted, and so it looks a little bit fake. Uh, and so this completely smooth transmission case, you assume, uh, is just a full of bondo. Actually, that's how smooth the, the real transmission cases are. Typically, you'd see a bunch of stiffening ribs on something like this uh, to, to, to knock down any vibrations that, that we might have coming from the engine. Um, and the reason this doesn't have those stiffening ribs is because we now have a 
sophisticated enough software and sophisticated enough casting technology that instead of putting stiffening ribs on it, we can subtly vary the thickness in different parts uh, of that smooth case to get the, the localized rigidity that we need to, to, to knock down any kind of noise. Uh, and in doing that, we save a couple of grams here and there, uh, which, uh, as you know, always adds up to, to real weight eventually. Um, this uh, six-speed is an unusual uh, gear set and it's extremely short gearing uh, and has a uh, fifth, uh, sixth gear uh, that's one-to-one. -one. Typically, uh, a rear drive transmission will have a fourth or fifth gear that's one-to-one -one, and then the top gear will be an overdrive. But the problem with that is that the uh, the one-to-one -one gear is the most efficient gear in the transmission. All you're doing is you're hooking the input shaft and the output shaft together so you don't actually send torque through any of the gears. Uh, so that's if that's the most efficient gear, obviously that should be the one that you're using uh, when, when you're cruising on the freeway and trying to get good fuel economy. So we built this with a one-to-one sixth gear and then had to make the final drive much taller so that the total gearing, when you multiply the, the primary gear ratio times the final gear ratio, would be a, a appropriate for the car, which overall is about 10% taller than it was uh, in, with the uh, NC. So that meant we needed to have like a 2.86 to one final drive, which is not gonna work with our old diff. So then we got to design a completely new diff. Um, the ring gear on this diff is the same size as the old one. So basically the, the strength of the diff is the same, but we managed to shave 15 pounds out of that diff. Oh, we also shaved 15 pounds out of the transmission. There we go. Um, the, the diff housing has been shrunk down around the differential, so it's, so it's uh, much more efficient. The housing is smaller. The front of the housing used to be cast iron. Now it's aluminum. Um, and uh, you can see actually on the back of here, you can see these four giant bolts here. Those are the main bearing cap bolts. We've integrated the bearing caps into the housing, whereas they used to be separate parts on the inside. That's part of why the diff looks so tiny on the outside, and it's actually the same size uh, on the inside. Um, if you look at the rear suspension, this is a fiendishly complex multi-link suspension, just like in the NC, except that all the links are in different places, so what it's doing is actually different. Uh, in, the, uh, in the NC, we had a, a, an init initial toe out from the compliance steer. When you put a side load on the tire, the bushings would deflect in such a way that it got a little bit of toe out, so it would turn in really hard and kind of throw the tail into the corner. And then uh, we had a kinematic toe in. So when the suspension compressed, it would toe back in and stabilize the car. We did that to make it really feel nimble and, and, and turn in more aggressively. But it kind of made it a little bit uncomfortable sometimes. It didn't take a set, uh, didn't take a set immediately. And some people were a little bit uncomfortable with the way that it turned in. So we moved the, the links around. So now it has a, a, a compliance toe in. Uh, when you first put a side load on the, on the tire, it tows in a little bit stable, it has a very stable response. And then as it rolls, it tows in a little bit more. And since everything is moving in the same direction, what you do is you end up with a much more linear steering response. And, and it gives you just a lot more confidence that the, that the rear tires have a lot of grip and you can, you can just sort of subconsciously trust what the car is doing a lot better. So between the, the improved steering feedback that we have and the way that we've tuned the electric power steering and the more stable rear, um, we get a really confident feeling in a corner. And when I say more stable rear, the first thing, whenever anybody says that to me, the first thing I think, oh my God, it's gonna understeer. No, it, trust me, it doesn't. We make it very stable so that then we can tune it to, to have a very neutral uh, feeling at the limit. So you can really, you can make it understeer, you can make it oversteer, you can drift at your heart's content. Um, Cause ultimately this, this is uh, really a driver's car. Motorman really wanted me to show you my Miata parts petting zoo. These are some parts that I uh, took, brought out just to sort of show how much lighter the components are in this car compared to the NC. Uh, we didn't have, we don't have any parts available for the cars yet. So there's actually a car back at the shop sitting on a lift, missing its transmission cross member and half its suspension because I brought it here. Um, a petting zoo, but on video isn't really interesting because you, you, you hold this, right? It doesn't, doesn't work. Um, but trust me, this steel cross member uh, from the NC is a lot heavier than this al aluminum one. I could just throw this, right? Um, we need like a little happy girl to hold this or something to make it seem more like an appropriate petting zoo. We, we don't have a budget for a happy girl. Okay. <laughs> well, there it is. Don't you, don't you wish you could pick these things up? <laughs> <laughs>